This might seem weird at first, but I assure you, you want to see this, okay? This is going to be really funny, okay? We are going to read an article from 2012. This article was sent to me and was dramatically read to me by a friend, uh, Silent, who many of you know. Silent is very, very good at finding hilarious old articles. And this is an article called My Son's Tattoo Hurt Me Deeply. Now, this is one of the funniest articles I have ever read in my entire life. And I want you to understand that this, this is TERFs. This article is the predecessor to TERFs. This is the predecessor to all of the UK uh, anti-trans and even the US anti-trans bullshit. It is truly a Karen story. And you will, all, those of you who have a contact with TERFs will, um, will understand why, what I mean immediately. And the rest of you will just be along for the ride. Because let me tell you, this shit is funny as fuck. Okay? All right. So... So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna read this. I'm gonna read this in a dramatic fashion, okay? All right, are we ready for a dramatic reading? When Tess Morgan's son came home with a tattoo, she was grief stricken. She knew her reaction was OTT over the top. He's 21, but it signaled a change in their relationship. Let's do this. Put out the bunting, crack open the beers, stand there in the kitchen, smiling from ear to ear because he's home. Our student son is home and the family is together. Wait a minute. Nope. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. I have to have music. We need music for this. Put out the bunting, crack open the beers, stand there in the kitchen, smiling from ear to ear because he's home. Our student son is home and the family is together again. And after supper, after the washing up is done, the others, his younger siblings, drift off to watch television. And he says, would you like to hear my tattoo? I say, you're joking. He says, no, I'm not, but I still wait. Any minute he's gonna laugh and say, you should see your faces because this man has been, this has been a running joke for years. The idea of getting a tattoo, the hard man act, the iron muscles. You want me to do a British accent? Shaved head, Jason Statham, Ross Kemp, he's a clever boy. Maybe during his school years, he thought a tattoo would balance the geeky, the geeky glory of academic achievement. His father says, where? On my arm, he says, and touches his bicep through his shirt, his lovely shoulder. In the silence, he says, I didn't think you'd be this upset. After a while, he says, it was just a drunken whim. I thought about it. I went to a professional. It cost $130. It wasn't just a drunken whim. My bad. 150 euro pounds, sorry. 150 pounds, I think, briefly, of all the things I could buy with 150 pounds. It's just a tattoo, he says, with the silence goes on so long that we have nearly fallen over the edge of it into a pit of black nothingness. It's not as if I, can, I came home and said I'd got someone pregnant. It seems to me, unhinged by shock, that this might have been the better option. His father asks, does it hurt? Yes, I say, cutting across this male bonding. It does, very much. For three days, I can't speak to my son. I can hardly bear to look at him. I decide this is rational. The last thing we need, I think, is an explosion of white hot words that everyone carries around for the rest of their lives engraved on their hearts. In any case, I'm not even sure what it is I want to say. In my mind's eye, I stand there, a bitter old woman with pursed lips wringing my black gloved hands. He's really done the one thing I've said for years. Please don't do this. It would really upset me if you did this. And now it's happened. So there's nothing left to say. I know you can't control what your children do. Why would you want to anyway? If you controlled what they did, you'd just pass on your own rubbish tip of imperfections. You hope the next generation will be better, stronger, more generous. I know all you can do as a parent is pack their bags and wave as you watch them go. So I cry instead. I have a lump in my throat that stops me from eating. I feel as if someone has died. I keep thinking of his skin, his precious skin inked like a pig carcass. 
my neighbor says there's a lot of it about. So many teenagers are doing it. I stare at pictures of David Beckham with his flowery sleeves, Angelina Jolie all veins and scrawls. Tattoos are everywhere. They seem no more alternative than piercings these days, but I still don't understand. Sam Cam with her smuzzy dolphin, the heavily tattooed at Royal Ascot. These people are role models? My niece had doves tattooed on her breasts, says a friend, and her father said, You wait, in a few years' time, there'll be vultures. It's the permanence that makes me weep, as if the Joker had made face paints from acid. Your youthful passion forever on display like a CD of the Smiths stapled to your forehead. The British Association of Dermatologists recently surveyed just under 600 patients with visible tattoos. Nearly half of them had been inked between the ages of 18 and 25 and nearly a third of them regretted it. I looked up laser removal, which is a possibility, I think miserably, that only works if you want a tattoo removed. And I'm not in charge here. My son is. My husband asks, have you seen it yet? I shake my head. Like a child, I'm hoping that if I keep my eyes tightly shut, this whole thing will just disappear. It's his body, he says gently. His choice. Bazinga. But what if he wants to be a lawyer? A lawyer? Or an accountant? Well, he'll be wearing a suit. No one will ever know, and he doesn't want to be a lawyer or an accountant. Oh, I know, I know. I meet a colleague for lunch. He knew how much it would hurt me, I say, tears running down my face. For years, I've said, don't do it. It's there for you, even after you've changed your mind about who you are and what you want to look like. You're branded like meat. It can damage your work prospects. It can turn people against you before you've even opened your mouth. She says, tell him how you feel. But I can't. For a start, I know I'm being completely unreasonable. This level of grief is absurd. He's not dying. He hasn't killed anyone. He hasn't volunteered to fight on behalf of a military dictatorship. But I feel as though a knife is twisting in my guts. I get angry with myself. This is nothing but snobbery, I think. Latent anxiety about the trappings of class. As if my son had deliberately turned his back on a light Victoria sponge and stuffed his face with cheap donuts. I am aware, too, that I associate tattoos on men with aggression, the kind of arrogant swagger that goes with vest tops, dogs on chains, and broken beer glasses. Is this what other women feel, or perhaps, I think, with an uncomfortable lurch of realization, just what older women feel? I stand, a lone Tyrannosaurus, bellowing at a world I no longer understand. Tattoos used to be the preserve of criminals and toffs and sailors. In the 1850s, the corpses of seamen washed up on the coast of North Cornwall were strangely decorated with blue, according to Robert Hawker, the vicar of Morwenstow. Initials or drawings of anchors, flowers or religious symbols. Our blessed savior on his cross with one hand on his mother and on the other, St. John the Evangelist. It's their object and intent when they assume their signs to secure identity for their bodies if their lives are lost at sea. Tattoos, then, were intensely practical, like brightly colored smit marks on sheep. Perhaps even then this was a, fra a fashion statement, a badge of belonging, or just what you did after too much rum. Later, the aristocracy flirted with body art. According to the National Maritime Museum in Greenwich, they know a lot about tattoos, Edward VII had a Jerusalem cross on his arm, while both his sons, the Duke of Clarence and the Duke of York, later George V, had dragon tattoos. Lady Randolph Churchill, Winston's mum, had a snake on her wrist. But you can do what you like if you're rich. On day three, still in a fog of misery, I say to him, shall we talk? We sit down with cups of coffee. I open my mouth to speak and end up just crying instead. I say, you couldn't have done anything to hurt me more. He's cool and detached, he says. I think you need to re-examine your prejudices. I think, but I have. I've done nothing else for three days. But I don't say that because we aren't really talking to each other. These are rehearsed lines, clever insults flung across the dispatch box. This is what comes of not exploding in anger in the heat of the moment. That, that gets a sus for me. Sorry, that gets a big sus for me. Sorry. I say, why couldn't you have waited until you left home? Why now when you're living here half the year? It's something I've been thinking about for a long time. There didn't seem to be any reason to wait. Which makes it worse. I'm an adult, he says. I paid for it with my own money. Money I earned. 
But we're supporting you as well, I think. As far as I know, you don't have separate bank accounts for your various income streams, so who knows? Maybe we paid for it. If you don't want to see it, that's fine. When I'm at home, I'll cover it up. Your house, your rules. In my head, I think, I thought it was your house, too. He says, I'm upset that you're upset, but I'm not going to apologize. I don't want you to apologize, I say. A lie. Groveling self-abasement might actually help. He says, I'm still the same person. I look at him, sitting there, my 21-year-old son. I feel I'm being interviewed for a job I don't even want. I say, but you're not. You're different. I will never look at you the same way again. It's a visceral feeling. Maybe because I'm your mother. All those years of looking after your body, taking you to the dentist and making you drink will milk and worrying about leafy green vegetables and sunscreen and cancer from mobile phones. And then you let some stranger inject ink under your skin. To me, it seems like self-mutilation. <laughs> If you'd lost your car in a car accident, I your arm in a car accident, I would have understood. I would have done everything to make you feel better, but this this is desecration. We look at each other. There seems nothing left to say. Over the next few days, my son, always covered up, talks to me as if I as if the row had the row had never happened. I talk to him too, but warily, because I'm no longer sure I even know him. And this is when I realized that all my endless self-examination was completely pointless. What I think or don't think about tattoos is irrelevant because this is the point. Tattoos are fashionable. They may even be beautiful. Just because I hate them doesn't mean that I'm right. But by deciding to have a tattoo, my son took a meat cleaver to my apron strings. He may not have wanted to hurt me. I hope he didn't. But my feelings as he made his decision were completely unimportant. The stars are not wanted now. Put out every one. Pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. I am redundant. And that is a legitimate cause of grief, I think. Does it not sound exactly like turf shit? They even brought up the uh, self-mutilation thing. All of this over a tattoo. Unironically sounds like a kid decided to, like, chop his own head off for a... Uh... No, they never say what the tattoo is of. They never even say what it was. They didn't say what it was. We don't know what it was. We never find out. It's the same fundamental impulses. This idea that, like, if I find it distasteful and you don't agree with me, you're, a fe you're like, personally attacking me because you decided differently than I. It's literally, like, and also, like, I let's just be real. Like, straight up here, there's, like, multiple areas where, uh, where she clearly states that, like, she associates, um, tattoos with uh, aggression, arrogant swagger that goes with vest tops, dogs on chain chains, and broken beer glasses. Tw I would be willing to put money on the fact this person is a turf these days. I love this article. This article is great. Oh, by the way, um, just so you all, just so you all know, if I was an editor, I would also publish this article. Because it's so funny that there's no way I can't like a person a person who writes an art who writes a letter like this is either fake in the first place or um, is is somebody who is so um, lacking in self-awareness that I, I can think of no other way for them to learn a lesson except for to write a letter and have everyone disagree with them. You know what I mean? Like. How else do you teach somebody who's convinced that their son, uh, like, v like, violated their relationship and that their son is a literal different person just because he got a small tattoo on his arm? Like, a person who is, who believes that, who's that much of a control freak, is, like, like, clearly unable to, to, like, have any self-awareness and doesn't realize that they're totally unreasonable like she even says multiple times in the article like oh i, I sh i'm sure i'm being unreasonable but she doesn't believe it she clearly states that she doesn't actually believe she's being unreasonable 
my feelings as he as he made his decision were completely unimportant. The stars are not wanted. Put everyone out, pack up the moon and dismantle the sun. I am redundant. And that is a legitimate cause for grief. Literally lamenting the fact that your kid is their own person and that you can't control them. It makes me sad to see parents like this being oblivious about their harmful behavior. It ruins kids' lives. Yeah, it's stressful. If you've had like a, a controlling parent, holy fuck. If you had to deal with a controlling family member, this shit goes beyond that though. Of course, like keep in mind that like, like there's so much going on here. The, 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 the part where she just is like, oh, it's not like his own body, whatever. Like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Like, I don't care about that. Like, she literally just hand waves the fact that it's his own body, and she literally holds above him his own childhood. Let me read this again. All those years of looking after your body, taking you to the dentist and making you drink milk and worrying about your uh, about eating leafy green vegetables and sunscreen and getting cancer from mobile phones, and then you just let some stranger inject ink under your skin. She's literally hanging his childhood over her. Holy fuck. His precious, precious skin. And this is why, at the end of the day, conservative people are fucking unreasonable. Not just unreasonable, but impossible to deal with, and also the source of all cringe. Conservative parents who are like, No, don't get a tattoo! No, don't be gay! Oh! They're the worst people on the planet. British conservatives are just the most embarrassing. See, that's the, one of the funny things that you get from British news is you get people who are like monarchists. They like unironically are like they 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 are so invested in their British identity that they exist in like Victorian England. They they think that they live in a society that existed like fucking three hundred years ago, and they talk as though they're like uh I don't know like their kid is is not going to be able to get married to landed gentry now. It's so fucked up. This is literally, Lady Hopium says, this is literally the kind of shit my mom said. After all those years of me giving birth to you, taking care of you, you were my little boy. How can you get rid of your penis? Like, bitch, my penis is none of your goddamn business. Oh, trust me. I've encountered this all, all like a million times. Like fucking, the fucking, uh, oh, you, I don't even know you anymore. I'm like, I'm just taking hormones and changing the way that I dress. And that's about it. Nothing else. And then they're like, I don't know who you are. You're an alien to me. It's like, bro, what the fuck? Oh, God, it's so embarrassing. I just thought this was such a, a fucking amazing article. I thought it was so fucking funny. Like, there's just so many moments. Perhaps this was, even then, this was a fashion statement. A badge of belonging. Or just what you did after too much rum. That's so fucking funny. Okay, come on. That was good. You guys got to admit, that was, a, that was a fucking fun article. By the way, if you guys ever come across articles like this that are, like, worthy of, of dramatic readings, please send them to me. I love doing dramatic readings of absurd positions. So, please. No, this is from 2012. Not 2002. 20 fucking 12. Gayfesh says... Um, when I stopped being a Christian, I had to explain to my dad that I had not in fact died and been replaced with a changeling. He actually argued against that. Oh my God. Elak says, my mom said that I killed her daughter. Well, uh, that's fucking stupid. That's also, by the way, that's also what my, one of my exes said that to me. And so did one of my family members. I won't say which one. Okay. It's so common. It's so fucking common. It's so embarrassing. Yeah, that's another one. That's another one you get a lot. Lady Hopium says, mourning her son. Why? I don't know why trans... Well, I don't know why cis people view trans people as literally killing somebody. It's the weirdest shit in the world. Uh, do we DM you or is there a section of Discord we can submit to? There is a section on Discord. On the Discord, there is a channel that is called, right here, it is called Content... Wait, where'd it go? It is called content recommendations. Content recommendations is where you should drop things. I check content recommendations every once in a while. Um, and uh, I go through and I'll grab stuff. If you have something, just put what it is. Let me know what it is. And then, um, and then I can react to it. 